Do you get mid-back pain just below the shoulder blades? While not as common as lower back pain, mid-back pain can still be incredibly annoying. But fortunately, in most cases, it's not serious, and with the proper treatment, it can be easily managed. Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Candy, and in this video, I'm gonna show you four exercises to relieve mid-back pain that you can do just about anywhere without having to get down on the floor and using no other equipment other than a chair. So before we get started, it is helpful to understand what causes mid-back pain in the first place. Your middle back normally should have a little bit of a forward rounding or kyphosis curve, but the lower part of your thoracic spine or the area between the bottom part of your shoulder blades and the bottom of your rib cage is often subject to excessive rounding and stiffness. Now, ironically, when you have pain right in the back, right on the spine, it's usually not caused to that stiff area, but rather areas where your spine becomes hypermobile or excessively mobile. Now, conversely, if it's on more of the sides of your spine, on the right side or the left side of the spine, that's often more due to muscles or possibly a problem with where the ribs join with your spine. Now, before we get started, I would also be remiss to not tell you that there are some cases where mid-back pain can be serious. It can be referred from your abdominal organs, particularly your digestive organs like your liver, your gallbladder, your stomach, or your pancreas. Or if you have osteoporosis, you can also develop pathological fractures in your thoracic spine. So you do need to do your due diligence to rule those things out. But the exercises in this video are going to more help the run-of-the-mill mechanical middle back pain. And it doesn't really matter whether it's a joint problem or a muscle problem because the exercises are going to help both of those things out. So the first one is going to be for the direction of rotation. Your thoracic spine does three basic movements. It does rotation like this. It does forwards flexion and backwards extension, and then a little bit of side to side. But because of your rib cage, that side to side motion is somewhat limited. So the first exercise is gonna to be to address rotation. And because of the way that the joints in your thoracic spine are oriented, they're oriented kind of like this. And so they move very smoothly in the direction of rotation. And that's often a good way to get your thoracic spine loosened up and warmed up and moving properly. So to do that, just cross your arms across your chest and twist from your shoulders, just a gentle, easy twist back and forth like this. And just go through what feels easy and comfortable. You don't wanna push it. You also don't wanna rotate as far as you can possibly go because that rotates more through your lower back. And while the thoracic joints are made to rotate well, your lower back or lumbar joints are not made to rotate. So again, just cross your arms, just easy back and forth twisting from side to side. Now you may notice that it's easier to go to one side than the other. And often it will be if you have a problem in the joints in your thoracic spine. But just go through what feels easy. And as you go back and forth like that through several repetitions, and we're talking 10, 15, 20 repetitions each direction, you should notice that you gradually start to loosen up and you can go a little bit farther than before. But this is not a push it or a no pain, no gain type of exercise. Just do what feels easy. And as you go along throughout the individual session and between sessions, you'll notice that you can gradually go a little bit farther. And that helps loosen up your joints as well as warm up your muscles to progress on to the next exercise. Now the next exercise is more to help with thoracic extension. Because the thoracic spine is normally a little bit more rounded, going forwards is usually easy for most people. But going backwards, particularly in the lower thoracic spine, becomes somewhat difficult. And so improving extension is helpful. Now, a lot of people will use a foam roller on the floor to do this, and that's a very good exercise, 
but if you have trouble getting down on the floor, then a foam roller may not necessarily be the best exercise for you. Additionally, if you have a lot of arthritis in your spine, a foam roller can sometimes be really uncomfortable. So here's an alternative that you can do anywhere. And again, the only equipment you need is a chair. So to do this exercise, you're gonna grab on to the back of the chair like this, and then just kind of walk your feet backwards. Now you're not leaning back on the chair, so it shouldn't be tipping like that. You're pushing almost straight down with your hands like this. Now if you do have some shoulder pain, and this is painful to do, you can also kind of grip on the sides like that, and that'll sometimes put your shoulders in a little bit better position. But whatever works better for you, put your hands on the chair, and then just kind of bring yourself downwards. And as you lower your head downwards, you get a little bit of extension through the thoracic spine. So this is a nice passive stretch to help you get more extension through the thoracic spine. And hold this for about 30 seconds to a minute or so if you can. If you can't hold it that long, just do what you can and break it up into two sets of 15 seconds or three sets of 15 seconds or four sets of 15 seconds. And just hold with what you can. And this helps you regain that thoracic extension mobility that you need to stand a little bit more upright. It also helps before moving into the next exercise, which is going to be to actively extend using your own muscles. And to do that, you wanna sit in a chair and lean forwards, bringing your chest as close to your knees as you can. This puts your lower back into a position of forward bending or flexion. Now that's important because if you just go into extension from a seated position, it's very likely that you're gonna get that from your lower back, which is easier to move into extension rather than your upper back or middle back, which are harder to move into extension. So lean forwards like that, then cross your arms across your chest like this. Then just think about lifting your shoulders up while leaving your belly down towards your thighs. Lifting up like that, holding five to 10 seconds, and then coming back down. Ideally, you wanna keep your neck kind of in a looking down position. You don't wanna look up like that because that can create some neck problems. So just lift your chest, don't lift your belly, don't lift your head. Just lift the chest and elbows. And then back down, and lift the chest and elbows. And the muscles you should feel working are kind of the muscles on either side of the middle back there. That helps you to actively get into the position of extension in your middle back. So that's the third exercise. The fourth exercise is more of an unloading exercise. And that's to help lift the weight of your shoulders and your arms and your shoulder blades off of your lower back. So to do that, you're going to just reach up in the air and reach up as high as you can possibly go. Now what this does, it kind of uses your upper trapezius muscles or your neck muscles to help unload your shoulder blades and help stretch out all of these muscles down here. So reach up towards the ceiling, this is kind of an unloading exercise of your spine. Hold that position, five to 10 seconds, and then come back down, reach up, hold five to 10 seconds, and then come back down, reach up, and then back down. And do about five to 10 repetitions of that exercise. The repetitions really aren't that important. It's more important that you do the exercises regularly. So doing them often, daily in most cases, if you do have some middle back pain. So hopefully you did find these exercises helpful to relieve middle back pain if you do have it. Try the exercises out and leave a comment below letting me know how they work for you. And if you did find this video helpful, make sure to give it a like and share it with someone else who may need to hear this information. The more people that see our videos, the more people we can help. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.